Well hello folks, how are we doing? Hope we're well. Welcome to another video here on my channel. And well, it's Friday today, getting ready for a big adventure this weekend. So what is the event you might ask? Well, it's not the North Coast 500, and it's not the Norfolk Coast Cycleway, which I was hoping to do this weekend. Turns out it's gonna be pouring down rain, thunderstorms and everything this weekend, further down south. So I thought, right, let's head north instead. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna to head to the Yorkshire Dales, almost on my, uh, cube here and I just want to show you quickly preparation for leaving Saturday morning tomorrow morning so uh, I say gone for typically lightweight uh, set up once again and uh, it took me ages to get this on here so I've got a tent sleeping bag sleeping pillow I've got a spare top one of these but so I've got some waterproof uh, over trousers I've got a drawstring bag in there I've also got a towel so I can have a shower when I arrive and a power bank as well for the Wahoo which is currently charging at the moment tent pegs on here above the, uh, the bike pump uh, as you see because I went for an extra lightweight setup because only one night so I went for a really small saddle bag this top peak one to go thing mechanical in there and basically as you can see I've got some sandals hung up here I, I actually put those in last second but I really could do with some sandals because I know what it's like if you haven't got anything on your feet. Uh, as much as it, it comes in useful using uh, cleat covers, I thought I want some sandals. So I've strapped this on using the uh, this passport luggage case straps right underneath there. I'm heading to Settle, a place called Oustwick, which is not far from Settle, uh, and that's tomorrow's ride. So uh, stick around, I'll see you in the morning. Well, hello, good morning. It's about quarter past seven. Just going through East Toft. And as you can see, the sky is a little bit gloomy. So today's ride is 197 kilometers. So let's call it Tundra, shall we? So like many avid cyclists, we all watch a variety of uh, channels on YouTube. And uh, one of those channels I watch probably heard of her, Katie Cooper. Well, I was doing my route last night looking at her thinking it's just a route I've not thought about much. The next to the route was well, YouTube open, so I had jumped on there. Katie's latest video was all about the uh, butter tubs climb. So I'm like, yes, a nice one. So I watched the video, of course. It looks like a nice climb. So I've worked that into today's route. Looking forward to that today. So. Uh, Thanks Katie, I accept your challenge. So yes, right now I'm heading north to a keen headwind, you can probably hear it. Hopefully you can hear me, hear me above it. On the subject of the wind, it's the thing I uh, miss this trap in Kinshaw. It's a county, it's one of those places where, well, if you've ever been here, you know it. You've just got to keep pedalling all the time. There's no let up. And even more so around here, where it's just so exposed, there's very few places to hide. So this is the A161, which is a beautiful road, to be honest, to ride on. Apart from the wind I just mentioned, the road surface is immaculate. Traffic, there's not a lot of it. I just want to share with you some thoughts and see what you think. Um, in a future adventure, I think of what I'm going to do, like the, pre the video prior to it, I'm going to stick a link uh, on YouTube uh, to a Wahoo live track. So perhaps, if you want to, you follow where I am, perhaps join up on the route. So before I uh, reach the A-Rose near Howden, which is looking quiet here in, in Goal, <laughs> um, I thought I'd just tell you about something I haven't done since 2018. In fact, I'll show you some footage in the corner of the screen uh, off my phone. I think it was September 2018 uh, when I'd sent some messages to myself, for SMS messages that is, for timings on the Yorkshire to Essex, my first 600 kilometre ride. Now basically what I've done, I've done it for the two cafe stops. First of which is at Nearsborough and again at Howells. So basically how it works is scheduled SMS messages that are sent to myself. So it comes up on my phone, which is in my back pocket. But I've also got my, back, my phone linked to my uh, Garmin watch as well. So it'll come up on my arm and I go, all right, okay, excellent, I know where I'm going. So the first stop is about 80, well, I think it's 83K to be exact. 
So we're looking forward to that. So I'm just coming up to what is uh, Katie Cookaburra's favourite motorway service stations in the UK. So by the way, this wasn't planned, it just happens to be here. <laughs> now I'm not sure you can see past all the uh, trees, but we shall point the camera that way as I go past. Apparently this is a posh service station. Tell you what, it's got a lovely subway though. <laughs> That's for sure. Anyway, it's too early for subway for me. So I am going past Drax Power Station, which I believe, don't quote me on this, is, sure it was, the UK's last power station that relied on fossil fuels up until this year. And now uses, uh, now produces green sources of energy. Like I say, don't quote me on it, but it's something along those lines. So, yeah, end of an era. Let's have a quick stop out at the entrance to Selby Minster. Not been to Selby before. It's a great looking building. Size of that. So while I stopped, I just want to talk to you about Audax as well. Now, if you haven't heard, you probably have if you do Audax, but uh, the uh, calendar events and permanent events up to 600 km distances have been uh, given the okay again. So I, you know, I wasn't going to do like 400 and 600, um, despite the uh, season being extended to 31st of October as well. But I think what I can do, I'm doing all points north in September, which is in, it's about 950 miles, uh, kilometers per, not miles, thank God. I can round that up to a thousand. And I'm sure that count as a four and a 600 kilometre ride. So uh, I do that as a DIY. That's the plan. And then I'll be able to keep my super randomness series going for another year, rather than skipping a year. Because I did a 200 and a 300 distance uh, way back uh, last autumn. I just didn't do the 400 and the 600, obviously. So uh, at least I don't think I did the 400. Over side of Selby now, and I'm glad that's uh, I'm on to a B road because I start to think have a fact, is it just like all A roads that I've put in today's by uh, essentially I trusted to strive to pick the best route a bit of a dart to get to uh, the destination in any way that's uh, enough of a failures in uh, Strava and the road network I just wanted to expand up on uh, top of all Audax again actually because those who just joined the channel and uh, hello to you I've had lots of people join the channel over the last week uh, before I'm going off on a tangent here but big thanks to uh, both Adam Watkins and Try Off and Down they've both given me uh, mentions on their channels in the last week and a bit so thumbs up to you anyway what was I saying Audax yes so for you for those of you who are new to the channel I was selected to take part in the uh, Transpennine, Transpennine, no, Transcontinental 2020. Obviously, that's been postponed until 2021, like everything else. And uh, basically, the Audax thing I was trying to get around to talk about is trying to increase my average speed to uh, fall within the top third of the 15 to uh, 30 kilometer. Lots of my 200 distances coming at about 26 kilometers, 25 kilometers average. So, over the course of the next 11 12 months, uh, as I get back into World Acts, I'll be uh, watching my watts. I just generally just try to get a bit faster, not just for the uh, shorter distances but the longer distances as well. Overall, speed performance needs to improve. Which may mean that I will invest, which may mean I will have to invest in a power meter for my sonder as well, because I'm starting to see a little benefits of having one. So, yes, watch this space. Well, I never. Here's a question for you When was the last time you was out on your bike and you dropped your one of your, one of your water bottles? <laughs> This happened to me, it must be uh, three years or more. I was chasing somebody down in front and uh, just slipped out my fingers. 
Anyway, when was the last time you dropped a water bottle? Don't forget to put a comment down below, let us know. So here I am, Water Mill Cafe. Really nice spot here in Nearsborough. Look at this behind me. Go down there, show you a bit closer, but you see it's not very busy, but I've just gone for sausage and bacon sandwich, milk and carne, milk and carne, and a brownie as well. So uh, yeah, there's a first stop, 80K. The next one is in Hawes, uh, the Cafe Curva. That's another 80K away, which is uh, after, well, it's just after butter tubs. So, uh, <laughs> I'm expecting I should be there for hot between three and four. It's probably more close to three o'clock anyway. It just depends how long it takes me to get up butter tubs, I guess. There you go, this first in the messages received, half ten. And it is literally half ten. <laughs> so I've timed that well. So just went through Masham. Stopped in the marketplace, there's a sweet shop there, so I just nipped in there and look. That's a nice sweets. I'm gonna drop a link in the corner to uh, the Dales and Beyond Audax, which I did beginning of June, the day after, or the day after or so, that uh, restrictions were eased and was allowed to travel somewhere for exercise. Me and Leyburn, and I do remember from last time I was here, there's a tap here for water. Things you remember. So I just tucked up in some water, got a tablet in there, ready to go again. Look at that sky though, that's quite miserable and dreary, isn't it? Now, I don't know if that was the Buttertubs climb, but I've just left Newbig in towards Mucker. And there's a series of 25 centers. It's a nightmare. And look what I'm re rewarded with. So, uh, my two o'clock alarm, the house went off. It's more like uh, three o'clock now, so yes, not too bad for time. Check this place out. Looks like a quarry, but it's not a quarry. Could not let this place go me, pass me by. Oh my god. <laughs> horrendous. I don't know if I finished yet, I don't think so. I think this is like the first segment. There's another climb to go. A bit more. Check out that view though. Tell you what, despite the mist, it does look better in person. <laughs> oh, Whew. Quick breather before I have to start climbing again. I believe it was worth all the effort. Well, it's 25% I've just got to the campsite. Absolute nightmare. Accident on between Howells and Giggleswick. Two hour detour. And then uh, had to go to Settle to get some food. At the last co-op, I turned it down. It was in Ingleton. That was like the last co-op before the campsite. So uh, yeah, I had another waste another for 40 minutes. Oh dear. Right, anyway, I'm going to get set up. See you in the morning. Well, hey folks, good morning. A view from inside the tent. I've done one of these before. I had a nice sleep last night. Mm. On and off. It was really warm, actually. Incredibly warm. So, yes, this is the tent. As you can see, very spacious. Now, we'll up on my feet. Out of stuff down the side there. Mostly non-food stuff, so it's the helmet and a few straps and shoes and lights and figs I won't be needed in the tent whatsoever. And then on the left hand side, down here, in the outer porch area, the food. So I've put a couple cans of Thatcher's Roses side of there. And then behind my head, I have a sleeping bag which I've wrapped away. And a sleeping pillow clothes, loads of junk and stuff like that, which I just make into a pile of things to support my head. <laughs> anyway, that's a 
brief insight into the tent. I think I have 10 more minutes. <laughs> so I'm a few miles outside the campsite. Just want to tell you, it's uh, 160 miles, uh, 160 kilometers, 100 miles. And uh, about 2,000 meters of climbing. And I stopped for a view of that rock over there. What's that, man? Somewhere you might go practice a bit of uh, climbing. Look at that. There's nothing else around here like that at all. You can't always trust the driver to take you a good way because look at this place. It's pretty inhospitable. And that road down there past uh, Coldwell Reservoir, the road in from Colne. Thanks, driver. Nightmare it was. <laughs> Kept going though, didn't pull foot down, but I was not expecting that at all. <laughs> so as you see, it's pretty dismal up here. It's a little bit drizzly. I'm, uh, I'm loath to put my rain jacket on because I've got my arm warmers on and let them then get wet because I'm going to be off the hills before you know it. And look, sun's, uh, sun's attempting, to, well, sun's trying to get out. So I'm making my way to Sour Bridge, which I'm going to try and stop there for something to eat. But I don't really know how far that is away. I was thinking 70, but I'm not even 50 yet and it's midday. <laughs> didn't get up till 9 o'clock. Well, I didn't, sorry, I didn't leave the campsite until just after 9. So I didn't got myself to blame. <sighs> I don't know what it is about my ability to choose whopping grey hills, but he's done it again. I don't even know if it, this is Pendle Hill. I don't know. Let's have a look around. It doesn't say path only, no. Now mountain, mountain bikes loud, yeah. That last bit probably be getting probably ignored. It's if you about bad mountain bikes on, on barren land. So I'm at the highest point in the ride. It's all downhill from here, as they say. Uh, it's a 48.7k done. And 410 meters above sea level, 411. <laughs> I bet it's lovely in the summer, but that nothing's going to make that climb any easier. That was whopping. It's like 17 percent for like oh, I don't know, forever. <laughs> it's determined I wasn't going to stop and walk. What's, what's the point? It's taking longer, isn't it? Just coming down the other side of the hill and look at this. That's a lot more dramatic with your eyes. Yeah, I've just come up down the hill and bam bam right in front of me. I just passed into a colder dale. What a beautiful place. Well, would you look at that? Today's not turning out as planned. I've had one puncture, which I changed, and then another 400 yards of the road, another puncture. So, check the tyre, with a bit of glass stuck in it. So. And then uh, two miles up the road, uh, a diversion. I tried to get through, I sort of turned back, gave up. There's another couple of cyclists saying, Yeah, you can get through there, get through there. And he showed us the way through. So, and then this happened, absolutely throwing it down. I'm not looking forward to getting out in that at all. I mean, look at the state of it, it's absolutely heaving it down. It's gone through a little village called Notton which I'm guessing is when in West Yorkshire. There's about 50k to go, 55, something like that. And I decided once it gets to 50, and well, this other kind of thatchers that have been carrying around with me all day. That's a bit of thank you. And I've got a kit cam in my pocket as well, so I'm gonna have both of those together. And I don't know if you can tell very well on camera, the sky is actually, starting to whiten, the uh, clouds are starting to thin a little bit so hopefully that means it's going to get a little bit brighter probably take my uh, jacket off in just a moment came down to the last, I don't know, about 45, something like that not past the 50 mark so I'm going to celebrate and have thatchers I thought to myself I might just stop and drink it but better still why not put it into my water bowl <laughs> given this has been this is Last night, a bit fizzy, so uh, here goes. Oh, yeah. 
Well, how much is in a can? There's a lot of fears. This is terrible, no. I know I'm back in South Yorkshire, or particularly, uh, more particularly, Doncaster. The amount of fly tipping that goes on in this county is absolutely horrendous. The land of the fly tippers, it's absolutely disgusting. But the council don't seem to do anything about it. So I just went to a place called Clayton. And apart from seeing loads of fly tipping, there was a couple, must have been in their 20s, cars parked off the side, hiding in the bushes, who was dancing. Uh, arms out to each other, doing the steps and all that sort of thing. I was like, thinking to myself, I've seen all of it now. So, yeah, out dancing in the great outdoors. Perhaps, perhaps one of them is nervous about dancing in public. That's getting married or something. Just left Hatfield Woodhouse. Heading towards five lanes round about the bottom idle bank. So my route, which I also didn't look at very well, wanted to take me down the A18. Now, uh, even during lockdown, there'd be a question mark whether I'd go down the A18. Want to be avoided. The thing is with the A18, it's a section of the road runs parallel to the uh, M180. It's in the middle. This one's parallel as well, but it's got less traffic on it, and all the idiots will tend to be on the A18. Probably about 10 12k to go. So, you enjoyed this one. It's been a little bit different, so I didn't get much footage on the way back. The elements, I was fighting the elements with the rain. So, I had my rain jacket on lots of the time. I'm going to leave this here. Again, if you joined me recently, you joined the channel. Hope you enjoyed this one and uh, comments, questions, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, give us a sub, if you're enjoying this channel enough and of course don't forget to hit that notification bell as well to get to, well those uh, little notifications on your phone. For me take care, have a great week, I'll see you again soon, bye bye. My chain needs lubing.